Hello guys and gals, and this is another color by number. Got my colored pencils here. There aren't in any sequence now though, so I didn't exactly plan for this. I also bought these. These are mechanical colored pencils. I've never seen such a thing, but they're only two dollars and come with lots of leads and apparently you can sharpen them and it's for detailed work, I guess. So probably not really adequate for this particular puzzle book, but I'll definitely use those. Um, also I have the pencil sharpener here. Completely empty. It's good because I might need to sharpen some pencils. Okay, let's see. And let's see, this was the first one. That was the lizard. This was the second one, the parrot. And I believe that today is the armadillo. And it's such a cute armadillo. I believe what we'll do first is um start at the very top here. And it looks like we need yellow for that. And I believe this is the yellow. I might need to sharpen it though. Well, I can't really tell. Yeah, it's so perfect. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, while we're doing this, uh, very re relaxing thing, the jig. Um, we're going to, uh, oh, I know what to talk about. Um, probably gonna need to sharpen this. It's looking like I'm going to need a lot of fours on this, and that's a lot of yellow. But yeah, um, I don't know. I probably have um, a book or something that can use the more finely detailed colored pencils. I'll definitely make them work. Okay. And then we'll just hit these. This should be pretty easy. Okay, three is orange, it looks like. Okay, and it looks like this part right here is all yellow. This whole spiral, and I should, probably should just have gone inside the lines, but Oh boy, and I see where there's some more yellow. Let's um, go and take care of that now. This is one neat looking sun, that's for sure. Reminds me of the um, Native American artwork. I don't know if Native American, maybe Pueblo, something like that. Um, I think they, they use artwork that's similar to this um, with lots of geometric shapes and stuff. Of course, I don't really remember much about my history of art class, except that I love the course. Probably my favorite history class was History of Ancient Art with um, Tracy Snowman. Very, very awesome teacher. Even recreated the um, the caves of Lascaux in an empty classroom. So it was like a cave. It was wonderful. Awesome. Anyways, that's all of number four. Let's hit number threes now. What they're orange. Now let's see. There's also light orange and dark orange. Um I don't remember. Um, I wonder if there's any dark orange. Hmm. I don't think there is in this picture. So we'll just use this orange here. Okay, looks like we need to hit. Yeah, this is nice. There we go, and around. We want those. We want the uh, strokes to be a little bit sloppy. It's not like using paint where everything's gonna be perfect, you know. MS Paint, you know, with the form fill or the color fill. I used to do that out of laziness, really, just because it was fun. You could basically just color an entire picture just by hitting a button. That was always kind of fun. Fun for me. <clears throat> and then, but I still don't really know much about shading, and so, you know, my images would always appear flat because I would always just form fill them like that. Still don't know anything about shading, sadly. But, um... Hey, 
Anyways, I was just reading Watership Down. Well, from Watership Down. Uh, I just uploaded the 15th episode of that. I figure it's going to go around 36 episodes. We're not even halfway done with that. We will be done with 1948 and 1984, rather, in a few days. And then we'll be starting Guinevere by, um, I think it was Sharon Newman. And, anyways, um, they said in the story that people would um, basically use ferrets to um, to get rabbits out of holes and stuff, to chase rabbits out. I don't know anything about that, though. I believe this is a British. Richard Adams was a British guy. So maybe it's something that the British do to get rabbits or something. I don't know. It always seemed, seemed it sounded kind of strange. Oh, there is Dark Orange. Okay, what can we do for Dark Orange? I... Okay. Oh, there's only orange and dark orange. I used the dark orange for... Okay. Well, we're just going to go extra dark on this one. There. See, you can see this is a lot darker than that other color. I like Watership Down because um, basically it shows determination. I think the guy's... It was a story that the, the author read to his children. Oh, well, these are ten. What's ten? Green. Middle green. I think this is the middle green. Um, on car trips, he would... Um, tell his children the story of um, Watership Down. And so someone's like, well, hey, you should probably get that published. And so he tried 12 times, got turned down 12 times. I mean, that would probably discourage most people. I mean, that would discourage me if someone turned down my story like 12 times, 13 times, something like that. But 13th editor said, sure, and now we have Watership Down, which is a literary piece of work, you know, classic. So I always see Watership Down as kind of a um, inspirational story because um, he was determined and he was able to get his book published. These days it's a lot easier to get, you can self-publish and stuff really easily like through websites. So it's quite, kind of not kind of as big of a deal as it was back then, but still I really do find it amazing. Not to mention that um, Watership Down now has had, like, an animated series, I think, and, like, a, re a reboot or something. So there's at least two series out there. Maybe they're movies. I don't know. I saw they're really, really violent. The book itself is really, really violent in terms of, um, you know, rabbits dying and getting torn up and stuff. It's really kind of... <laughs> Not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. I should know. I, I'm reading it. <laughs> and I do change some words in there because they are outdated. I mean, back when the story was written, then um, words like queer had a different meaning than they do now. So every time I see the word queer, I say strange because that's what that's what it means. This day and age, queer means, um, I think that, I think that queer means gay, as in homosexual. So, um, just so that it's taken in the right context, I always change the word to, like, strange or weird or something like that. You know, because that's the, the word's true meaning, or what was intended by the uh, author. I know I had to do that with, with, um, J the J.R.R. Tolkien book, too. And there were some phrases in there that could really be misconstrued, like, he's one hot dragon. Um, of course, they mean, mean something different these days. Um, I think that light brown and brown, I think I only have one brown. I think I only have this. I don't think I have a light brown. So if I need light brown, I will just shade this lighter. Anyways, let's do this a mountain range here. 
Uh, we'll start right here in the margin. It looks like chocolate. <laughs> chocolate mountains. But yeah, terminology is kind of strange. Sometimes I'll have to change things around because, uh, well, just basically because architecture itself, the architecture of language is changing. Words mean different things now, so, uh, yeah. 17 is gray. Okay, and now this is going to be light brown, like that. So we're going to barely touch it, so we can do a light brown scheme here, like that. That's going to be a light brown. So yeah, <sighs> let's meet in the middle here. Uh, here. As you can see, I need to really do this one hard so that I can demonstrate the difference between the dark brown and the light brown, or the, rather the, the regular brown and the uh, light brown, like so. Let me demonstrate here. Okay, we, we're going to barely touch the paper here. There we go. And then we again pour on the dark brown right here. Which is the best I can do because I don't think I have a light brown colored pencil. So we just have to use the dark brown and just use it like that. Let's um, etch out around the cactus and the succulent plants. And around the armadillo's ears. And we will... Do this. Do the dark brown first. Because we have to really push down. <laughs> I had a color by number kit once that actually had an overlay. So the, the numbers weren't actually on the paper. They were on the overlay. And I kind of like that idea. It's kind of a neat idea. Not that I'm begrudging this one. I think this works out fine. I I like this. Just that it's easier, easier with a cellophane overlay. And that way you have a better picture in the long run. But I rather like this. This was a neat little book and totally worth a dollar. Okay, and uh, we'll just have to basically try the whole light scheme thing here. So all light. There we go. I'm gonna barely touch the paper here. So we'll, we'll have like a beige thing going on. Oops, that one was a. And there will be some some strands in there that are going to be dark brown, but. For the most part, it's going to be kind of light. That just leaves this area here between the armadillo's ears, which should, shouldn't take too long. Okay, oops. Now we just lightly touch up this area, really pour it on right here, and then oh, we're gonna need a lot of 15. I just saw that. 
11 is light green. Okay. That's all these little plant things. There we go. Oops. And up like this, up like this. Oh, there we go. Hopefully I have the camera in the right place. Okay. Done with 11. Now, all of these stones now. 14 brown. Wow. Let's hit the, let's get these stones all worked out. Uh, we're going to make them extra dark. Um, okay. I believe that all the stones are going to be 14, which is the dark brown color. Sure looks like it. Uh, yeah. There's a stone right here. Stone right here. Stone right here. We're probably going to do the desert last because it is such a massive piece. Nine is dark green. I believe it's this. Yeah, this is definitely a dark green. Okay. And we got what looks like a prickly pear cactus. Oops. I probably need to uh, sharpen this because it's... Uh, one end is restricted. But this is looking like a prickly pear cactus, just saying. And uh, we're going to get this taken care of. And it looks like we have yellow up here. We'll Take care of the bloom up here. Just some yellow. There. Looks like we have 10 and 11. 10 is green and 11 is light green. Okay. 10 is green, so that would be this one. Wait. 9 is dark green. Okay, we need to lighten this up a little bit. Like this. I need it to be green, but also distinguished from the light green. Okay. Well, there's a little leaf here that's hiding. We will take care of that. Let's see. Guinevere. I haven't read that book in a very long time. I found it on accident at a library book sale. And basically bought it because of the cover art. And it turned out to be a very good book based on our Arthurian legend. Just another retelling of the legend of King Arthur. Except more from the pers perspective of Guinevere. Brilliant book, actually. Uh, 11. Light green. Okay. Yeah, this is going to work just fine. Because this shade of green is... a lot lighter than... <laughs> Okay, and we got these leaves. Did I get that one? Okay. And I see some stones I missed. <laughs> yep. Fourteen is brown. Okay. 
Okay. Let's color these cactuses. Four. That's yellow, which is really hard to see on camera. But the color is there. Nine is green. That's dark green. So we're going to need this green. Nine. Nine is dark green. Okay. I thought that that was kind of different. I can fix this. Yeah, there we go. These still look like prickly pear cactuses. Except I don't know if prickly pear cactuses have yellow blooms. Either way, this is going to be a neat looking cactus. Okay. Those nines, now we got tens. Tens are green, which is this. Hold the picture in place. Ten. 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 And eleven, which is a light green. I need to sharpen this pencil. But I think that we're done with it now. So I'll sharpen it for next time. Okay, now that just leaves the desert and the armadillo. Let's see, we'll start with the ears. We need gray for that. Well, we have black, and I don't have gray, so we'll just have to do the whole shading thing. And, uh, oh. you're going to <laughs> add a little texture here. A little detail. Again, I'm having to be black, so I don't have gray, but light black is gray, so... What's five? Five is pink. Okay, so we have... Sixteen is black. Okay. Um, where did I put my... I guess this is it. Okay, that's the way it's supposed to look. Now, 16, 
Oh, we're, we're layering black and gray. 16 is black. Okay. Okay, and then we get this. And this. And this. And then 17 is gray. Okay. Not very much distinction, but it will work. Um, okay, so 17 is gray. We'll do the legs next. They're gray. Okay. Although I believe that armadillos are brown and not exactly black and gray, but this is still a really nice picture. Okay. Gray. 17 is gray, so that means that... Uh, Um, 17 would be this area right here. It's, uh, then this area right here. Oops, I got that one a little bit too hard. Okay. Do all the light ones first. Like this. Barely touching the paper. Oh, and it looks like these are these two are next to each other. Okay, that's interesting, but okay. And there we go. Oh, then these two are together also. Okay. And then these two. Two, three rather, well, sort of. And then seventeen. <laughs> this is black. This is a small area, we'll get rid of it first. There we go. Black. Should be in stark contrast to the gray of this layer. There. 
We're almost done with 17. So looks like there's two more areas to do. And I actually put, find the black areas to be easier, which is why I'm doing the, the light areas first, because they're a little bit more difficult. And you just can't push as hard as you want. It takes a little bit more concentration than... Okay. Good. And that just leaves this area right here. Oh, and five. Five is pink. Okay, well... Okay. Now, I need my pink again, because I forgot to color this in. There. Now, black. There. Um... there. So we looks like we go every other one now. We'll push pretty hard to make sure that we get the right color. That the black is several shades darker than the gray. I'm just gonna wear away my pencil pretty fast. Okay, and it, it, it's starting to look okay, I guess. This will leave one more thing to do. And that that, one, that that stripe came out a little bit too light, but that's okay. Oh, uh, we'll do this next. Meet in the middle. Okay, I had to sharpen my pencil. As I said, this really does wear down the colored pencils. But it's turning out really, really nice. And uh, this isn't exactly a quick process. It's nice and slow. That just leaves this one band right here. If there are nine bands here, then this is probably a nine band armadillo, but I don't know. Those are the... There is a, an armadillo that can roll up into a ball. I think it's a nine band armadillo, but I'm not sure. It's kind of a misconception that all armadillos can roll up into a ball. Penguins can. Well, kind of. They can...
Okay. Now, that just leaves brown. Light brown, actually. So, this ought to be fun. It's going to take a while. So, let's start right here. Since we've colored everything, then um, it's okay to get out of the lines a little bit. It looks like these pages tear out. I probably should because, um, as you can see right there, the images are getting transferred over, but can't be helped. It still was working out fine. <clears throat> Okay, well, we're done with that. Maybe we should go around the back now. Okay. No, I got a little bit heavy on the brown there. But that's okay. It's still fine. We want some directionality to this. We'll be a little bit loose around the edge there. Okay, we're almost done. Next, we'll go up to the air, the area through here. Through there. Which shouldn't be too hard. Okay, we're going to go around these stones. And around these stones and pebbles. There. It's not going to be perfect, but we just want to give the illusion that it's all covered without actually covering it all. Next, this area right here looks... Okay. We're going to uh, go around the cactus right here. There. And again, it's not going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we just want to cover as much of this as possible. There. There. Now, um, let me put a book like this so that I can do this. It's going to get a little bit dark in some of these areas, but some of the sand is just darker, I guess. We can actually even go over the rocks again. Since they are dark brown, they won't really register if you 
go over them with a lighter color. Around. Sand goes through here. There we go. Let's um, do this. There. Okay, so, like I say, you can go over the rocks again. They won't retain any of the color that you go over them with because you're using a lighter color. We want to make sure and get between the leaves there. But we're so close to the edge that uh, I'm just going to lightly come up to the edge. And it seems like we're going to fall off the edge. Okay. Okay. And there we go. Put a little a few highlight colors in. And I think that we are about done. I uh, will there. Doesn't look like there's any sky color. That's okay. Okay, so let's uh zoom in. There's the sun. Cactus, the mountains, the cute armadillo, and next we have a monkey. We'll be doing that one next. It's a cute monkey. And as you can see, um, it, um, it transferred some of the color here from over there, but that's okay. We've been doing a color by number. Um, if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. And if you support me in any way, all that information will be in the description below. So always thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.